and welcome to STV News. This is Nahin Tahir with our headlines. Panel starts a week-long booster dose campaign today aims to inoculate over 10 million people across the country. 18 budget session of the 11 National Assembly begins tomorrow. DMP imposes various restrictions on the parliament area. Bangladesh or United States to recognize its continuous improvement of labor and human rights situations. Bangladesh started a week-long booster dose campaign aiming to inoculate over 10 million people across the country today. The campaign began at 9 a.m. in the morning and will continue till June 10th, said senior health service division officials. The government has taken such an initiative to cover over 10 million people through nearly 40 million citizens are waiting to get the booster dose, he added. According to the Health Services Division, the booster dose will be administered at 16,181 centres across the country. Among these, 623 are permanent centres, while 15,558 are temporary ones. As many as 45,535 health workers and volunteers have been roped in for the campaign, official said. Adults who got their second dose some four months ago are eligible for the booster shot. Alongside the booster dose campaign, the regular activities of administering COVID-19 jabs are underway. After being closed for four long years, Malaysian labor market is going to be open for Bangladeshi workers. In the next few months, the country will employ a large number of workers in various fields, including constructions and palm groves. However, there has been a fixed reaction among barrier leaders to sending people through a limited number of agencies. Despite the controversy, former President Benazir Ahmed sees the opportunity to send people to the fair as positive. Former Secretary General Shamim Ahmed Chaudhry Noman says it is an unwelcome intervention to fix the agencies. Former Finance Secretary Fakrul Islam thinks that the new process will reflect opacity instead of transparency. Malaysia has set a condition of sending recruits through 25 recruiting agencies to ensure transparency and accountability in recruitment. For Kalislam, former finance secretary of Bangladesh's Manpower Exporters Association, has raised questions about the process. Bangladesh has urged the United States to recognize its continuous improvements of labor and human rights situation. Salman F. Rahman, Prime Minister's private industry and investment advisor, asked for the recognition in a meeting with John Finer, U.S. Principal Deputy National Security Advisor at the White House in Washington. During the meeting, Finer, who also serves as assistant to the U.S. President and a key official of Biden administration, expressed Washington's willingness to work more closely with the Bangladesh government on governance, labor and human rights issues. While expressing similar interest to work with the U.S. government, Rahman stressed that the U.S. and other development partners should duly recognize measures already undertaken by the government of Bangladesh for the continuous improvement of labor and human rights in the country. The 18th budget session of the 11th National Assembly is starting from tomorrow. The Dhaka Metropolitan Police DMP has imposed various restrictions on the parliament building area around the session. The ban signed by DMP Commissioner Shafiqul Islam said the carrying all kinds of weapon explosives and other harmful and polluting substances and any kind of assembly processions demonstration has been banned in the designated areas from 12 noon tonight. Restrictions have been issued in these areas to maintain peace and order in the Jatiya Shangshud Bhabon and surrounding areas to ensure smooth conduct of the 18th session. This order will remain in the force till the end of the session. Meanwhile, due to strong economic fear, the situation in Bangladesh is unlikely to be similar to that in Sri Lanka, said Planning Minister A. M. A. Mannan. He said subsidies on agriculture would continue in the next budget to avoid food crisis. At the event, economists and investment analysts emphasized that the need for Corona to increase agricultural subsidies in the next year's budget, as well as to keep commodity prices moderate to curb inflation and control the dollar market.
আর বাড়তে পারে টুডে ইজ ন্যাশনাল টি ডে টি ইজ নাও অ্যান্ড ইন্ট্রিগাল পার্ট অফ হিউম্যান লাইফ The journey of tea industry in the country started in 1854 with the commercial production of tea in the Malanchari Tea Garden of Sylhet. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was the first Bengali chairman of the tea board. At present, more than one and a half lakh tea workers are working in 167 gardens. Although there are no workers in the labor market, for less than five years, Two 700 taka a day surprisingly tea workers are working for only 120 taka a day. Workers working at such low wages in the expensive markets are spending their days with their families in the boundless hardship. Acknowledging the dire straits of the shortage labor leaders says employers are not abiding by the wage increase agreement. But garden officials say they are working alongside the government to improve the living standards of tea workers. We are, we are taking a short break, so stay with us. Welcome back and you're watching SCTV News. Now news from abroad. The Federal Investigation Agency, FIA, told Pakistan's special court that the agency wanted to arrest Prime Minister Sheba Sharif and Chief Minister Punjab Hamza Shehbaz in the RS-16 billion money laundering case filed against the father and son duo. FIA's lawyer argued that the duo was not a part of the investigation. However, Hamza's counsel rejected the claims accusing the agency of misleading the court as the two had been a part of the investigation. On the flip side, in his argument, the counsel for Sheba Sharif and Hamza Shabazz, Mohammad Amjad Parviyaz, said that the investigation has been going on for the last one and a half year and the FIA has been unable to produce any evidence against his clients. Meanwhile, a special court in Lahore extended on Saturday the interim bail of the Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his son Punjab Chief Minister Hamza Shehbaz until June 11 in the hearing of Rupee 16 billion money laundering case against them. Ukraine's leader announced that they are defending Ukraine for 100 days already and victory will be there. President Volodymyr Zelensky released a message in a video featuring that the same key ministers and advisors who appear with him in a defiant broadcast on 24 February, the day his Russian counterpart launched his assault. Ukrainian forces claim to have recaptured around 20% of the territory they lost in the Severodonsko since Moscow's invasion. But according to some reports, Ukraine is suffering significant setbacks in the parts of the east amid growling street-by-street -street battle. NATO's chief pointed out Ukraine may face a long war of artillation and highlighted that its allies must find ways to provide sustainable support over the long term. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Friday blamed the United States and Europe for the energy problem they are facing, saying they have stoked fears about climate change to boost support for renewable energy, but then underinvested. Speaking on Russian TV, Putin said those countries adopted a short-sighted policy that relied too heavily on renewable energy sources such as solar, wind and hydrogen. Those technologies weren't yet ready for massive deployment or were too expensive, he said, and Europe and the United States downplayed the role of what they were supposed to replace, hydrocarbons. The result was underdevelopment and underinvestment in energy and an increase in prices, according to Putin. Cheers greeted Prince Harry and his wife Meghan outside St. Paul's Cathedral on Friday as they made their first public appearance in Britain for two years. But opinions were split among the tongues of fan waiting at the London landmark to catch a glimpse of the royals reflecting a generation divide. The couple's return for the Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee celebration was always going to be watched closely as a test of their popularity. 
The Sudan as working royals in 2020 and settle in California and their very public criticism since have outreach fans of the monarchy. France and Croatia, the two finalists of the 2018 World Cup, have stumbled in the UEFA National League. Denmark defeated world champion France 2-1, Austria beat Croatia 3-0. France dominated from the start of the match at the straight defense in Paris, but France did not see a goal in the first half. However, at the beginning of the second half, the world champions took the lead through Karim Benzema's goal. However, Denmark star Andreas Cornelius equalizer in the 68 minute as the substitute. Cornelius scored around another goal two minutes before the end of the regulation time to give the team a great victory. Marco Arnautovic, Michael Gregorisch and Ma uh, Marcel Savitzer all scored in Austria's win over Croatia. Before ending, we go through the headlines again. Bangladesh starts a week-long booster dose campaign today aimed to inoculate over 10 million people across the country. 18 budget session of the 11 National Assembly begins tomorrow. DMP imposed various restrictions on the parliament area. Bangladesh are United States to recognize its continuous improvements of labor and human rights situation. You're up to date with the top stories so far here on SCTV. And to know the latest in SCTV news, visit www.sctv.tv. Stay with us.